Welcome to a nice fast-paced episode of CNB here on the NDTV network. I am Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. We got lots to get to today, so I'm not going to dwell on this fantastic beast of an RS Q8 that I'm driving because you've seen this car on the show before. It doesn't hurt for uh, me to get a little extra time driving one. But let's get on with our top story. It's a huge exclusive, all India exclusive, because it's a car that's been talked about for quite some months now globally. It's one that's created a lot of buzz. It is, of course, another electric vehicle. I'm talking about the Ford Mustang Mach E. Yes, I have absolutely loved spending time with that car as well. Here is my exclusive review. Seldom does one car generate so much buzz. When that buzz is positive, it's great for the brand, especially when there's so much at stake with it. The Blue Oval put its reputation on the line when it brought out this car, the Ford Mustang Mark E. This is an EV or electric vehicle, but it is also an SUV or crossover, and it's exclusive here on Car and Bike. Now there was a lot of talk when Ford decided to put the Mustang badge on this car. Should it happen? Should it not happen? From a marketing perspective, it's a masterstroke because of course it gets a lot of attention. And from the point of view of the car's performance, well you can debate that till the cows come home. The good thing though is that the thing that's gotten people excited, buyers, in the market, that logo up front, that's the part that Ford was banking on. Seems to be working too, I have to say. Yes, people can't get enough of this one. The demand has been through the roof in the United States and many other markets also want it just as badly. Throw in the current semiconductor shortage situation and the Mustang Mark E is looking even more desperately desirable. Waiting periods have touched seven months in the US. And it's not all hype. The most potent variant of the Mustang Mark E is faster to 100 km per hour than the most powerful Mustang muscle car ever was. The Mustang Mark E is available in many variants. All of them have all wheel drive as optional, though it is standard on higher variants. The model line begins with the Select at around $44,000 which has a 211 to 230 mile range. Next is the premium that stays under 50 grand. Its range goes up to 300 miles with the extended battery. The extended range battery does become standard with the California Route 1 and you can choose rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. And the powerful variants are the GT and GT Performance Edition which tops off at just over $66,000. The drive range is 10 miles lower on the GT Performance Edition, which also gets more torque. I am driving the premium with the extended range battery and all-wheel drive options. The Mark E looks great in rapid red metallic. The proportions are very coupe SUV. The headlamps with their daytime running lights and the signature face are instantly recognizable. And the tail lights scream Mustang. The panoramic single piece glass roof is truly sexy. And while the one touch door release instead of a handle is very cool, it takes some getting used to. There is a good sized boot with 402 litres, extendable to 1420 litres, with the rear seats folded down. And then the small frunk up front with 81 litres capacity. On the road, the first impression of the Mark E is very positive. The car feels ready for action and nicely taut. 
I was really looking forward to the handling on the Mark E and it does not disappoint because it handles more like a car than an SUV. Now the thing I was most looking forward to was to see the response that you get in terms of the throttle response and of course the handling because so much has been spoken about what Ford has been able to do here especially at this price point and I think that's the part of the package that becomes really impressive because what you get is a car that does perform really well as electric cars go and so when you compare to the competition you're going to find this car is a lot of fun to drive and as yet surprisingly affordable. Yes, the Mach-E is a lot cheaper than the likes of the Tesla Model X or Audi e-tron, but it will face stiff competition from the Volkswagen ID.4 or Volvo XC40 Recharge here in America. Cars like the Mazda MX-30 or Hyundai Kona Electric are smaller and cheaper though. Now, the thing that's been talked about a lot on the Mustang Mach-E are its drive modes. And what you get there is the whisper mode, which is obviously, as the name suggests, nice and silent. Engage, which is like the normal mode. It gives you a good balance of dynamics and uh, decent amount of uh, efficiency. And then there's the unbridled mode. Unbridled, just sounds perfect. Goes brilliantly with the logo on this car. In regular cars, you would call that Sport or Sport Plus. But well, I'll say it again, unbridled. They do like it. The Mark E has a 70 kilowatt hour battery as standard and the extended range is a 91 kilowatt hour pack. There is an electric motor on the rear axle in standard variants and the all-wheel drive has one on the front axle too. Power output varies from 265 bhp to 288 bhp for the rear wheel drive models and 265, 344 to 470 bhp on the all wheel drive models depending on the variant. Peak torque goes from 430 to 580 Nm in the lower variants and up to a whopping 860 Nm on the GT Performance Edition. Top speed on the GT is 124 miles per hour. 0 to 60 miles per hour, that's about 97 kilometers per hour, takes just 3.5 seconds on the GT Performance Edition. On the lower variants, it takes anywhere from 4.8 to 6.1 seconds. Wheel sizes vary from 18 to 20 inch and you can opt for adaptive damping too. Like many EVs, the Mark E has a simulated spaceship-like sound and then that propulsion sound adds a virtual vroom to the proceedings. Those of you who have been regularly watching my reviews, especially of the electric cars, know that I like single pedal driving. The good news here is that even though you don't have the paddles to adjust the regeneration, you do have one pedal mode, as always. I love it. Ford Copilot 360 is what Ford calls its ADAS or Advanced Driver Assistant Systems. You get everything standard with features like blind spot warning, cross traffic alert, lane keeping and centering, auto dimming lights, emergency braking and adaptive cruise control. The Mark E also has nine airbags as standard along with stability and traction control and child seat restraints. The Ford Pass Connect app lets you set up your car before you get to it, from saving navigation destinations to temperature settings. So yes, the Mach-E is also a connected car 
and also offers over-the-air updates for its software. Its massive 15.5-inch touchscreen and 10.2-inch digital cluster are also standard. The animation on them when you enter the car is pretty cool. The car has the latest fourth generation sync system with voice control and Sirius satellite radio is also built in. My test car also had the optional BNO sound system with nine speakers. Smartphone connectivity with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is par for the course, as is a wireless phone charger pad below the screen. That screen is intuitive and easy to use and navigate. It also gives you access to the settings like ambient lighting or climate control and also lets you select the ADAS features you want to use. Everything from cruise control to lane keep assist to driver alert as I said. The screen also houses the exterior camera views as well as the drive modes of course. The graphics and animation are very clean and the screen stays in white mode during the day and turns dark grey at night. The instrument cluster is slim and shows you a minimalist view. It always shows you the drive range though, which is a good thing and the touchscreen system will also help you find charging points close to where you are in case you need a quick charge. The cabin comes across as well built with material quality and technology really shining through on its user experience interface. On the whole, this is a well-rounded package and I totally see why so many are impressed. Ford has done a great job of making the Mustang Mark E desirable, capable and even fashionable. That it is also an EV makes the whole thing work perfectly. Now that Ford has decided to be an import-only operator in India, I do hope this car is on the top of the list for what we will get starting 2022. And even though as an import it won't be cheap, it will still beat the likes of the premium brigade electrics we've been seeing of late. The Mark E, please react to it. We'll take a short break now, but we are back with more news on electric vehicles. Keep watching. Welcome back. Over the past few weeks on CNV, we've been carrying some special messages from a lot of special people who have been congratulating us on CNB 900. 18 year journey has meant a lot to us. Today, we have a gentleman who I have had the privilege and honor to track very closely as a journalist. Someone whose advice and counsel has meant a lot to us over the years as a team and someone who everyone seems to follow, not just auto journalists or journalists in general, but the whole country. Yes, it is someone who is very special. Take a listen. Sid, my congratulations to you and the team of Car and Bike on entering a very exclusive club. As far as I know, there aren't too many TV programs or series that cross 900 episodes. So clearly, you've discovered the elixir of life. Now, the elixir of life is supposed to be a, some kind of magical potion that extends life indefinitely. In the case of Car and Bike, the magic is quite apparent and that is you. You too seem to remain forever young and your passion for all things on wheels is most obvious and infectious. I really believe that authenticity is in rare supply these days, but clearly you have a surplus of it. So I have little doubt that you and the show will go on for as long as you want it to, because we're never going to have enough of it. I think I'll be cheering again when you cross 2,000 episodes. Congratulations.
Electric vehicles, it is a topic that has become more credible, it's gone beyond lip service now and we are starting to see some very real world action when it comes to this space, not just globally, but yes, here in India too. And one brand that has been at the forefront of all of this globally and is now wanting to do exactly that here in our market is Hyundai Motor. Speaking with me about this is uh, Tarun Garg, who's joining us on Car and Bike. It's good to see you. Thank you, Siddharth. Always a pleasure to talk to you. And it's nice to do a real-world interview yes, after a long finally. time. Yes, finally. So thank you for your time. The uh, topic that I mentioned at the start, of course, is the reason why we are here today. Uh, significant announcements coming from Hyundai. I think uh, you know you have now taken your time to, I think, research this, understand what is required, and you've laid out a roadmap. First thing that will interest our viewers, most exciting, is the fact that you've said six BEVs, battery electric vehicles, by 2028 in the market. Um, why six? What is the background that has gone into this decision? Right. So we're very happy to make this announcement. We believe very strongly that uh, uh, as a part of our Beyond Mobility campaign and sustainability being a very key pillar, we have to really look at cleaner mobility in a much more stronger way. Uh, of course, uh, we, we take... Uh, pride that 2019 when we launched the Kona, the EVs were only being talked about in India and we were able to really launch a product with a range as big as 450 kilometers and in an SUV body type. And that really helped us to really study the market, to look at what are the teething issues and see, yes, now we are ready to make this announcement of six BEVs. Uh, look, when you talked about uh, okay, why six, uh, uh, what kind of BEVs, I would say that, as you know, the market is really shifting towards SUVs. Today, SUVs are contributing 37% uh, to the overall market. So we are looking at SUVs, CUVs, as well as sedans when I talk about the six BEVs. A very uh, uh, important uh, fact here is that what are the platforms we are looking at? So Siddharth, here I'd like to tell you that, uh, as you know, that we have a, uh, Hyundai Motor Group has an eGMP platform, uh, which is electric global modular platform, which has some unique advantages. This is one. Uh, yes, Product which has some that. very unique advantages, yeah. not only in terms of the modular because it really helps us to give you different body types, different lengths, weights, etc., etc., but also in terms of usability. When I talk about usability, what I mean is a very good flexible interior space because the HVAC is really pushed into the engine compartment and then you can have those sliding consoles, you can have a flat roof, you can have a slim cockpit. In terms of performance, we're talking about a, a maximum speed of 260 kilometers per hour. You're talking about a range which can go up to maybe 800 kilometers in Indian conditions. So there's a lot of, uh, of course, reliability, performance, everything is there. Uh, at the same time, we also understand that probably the localization level would really take time to come when, when we talk about the eGMP platform. So we are also looking at some of the IC-derived platforms for these for these BEVs and where, you know, we can get a quick localization uh, uh, and probably, you know, uh, because affordability is very important yeah. when we're talking about uh, uh, BEVs as well. So probably you can say that this six BEVs will have 50% from the eGMP platform and 50% from the IC derived right. platforms and a mixture of uh, mass and mass premium and a mixture of SUVs, CUVs and sedans. Now, the ICE derived uh, platform that you're talking about, I mean, the Kona is a good example of that already. Is the Kona one of the six? Uh, I would say yes, total portfolio uh, of BEVs will be six by 2028. Okay. And, uh, you know, when it comes to the ICE side of things, of course, you have more than one platform that's already under production. Uh, and your advantage would be the high current local levels that you already have, localization levels that you already have. Um, so we're talking about possibly more than one platform. It doesn't have to be just that one ICE platform. Right, right. Because, the, like I said, there are some advantages of IC yeah. derived that uh, because we already have a localization. At the same time, for every new model, it's a new platform we're talking about. So uh, so we'll see. We'll see, uh, like I already mentioned, that there are some options available. So we are really studying them. And then, uh, of course, we'll decide that, yes, how many platforms uh, will, uh, as far as IC derived platforms, BEVs is concerned. Tarun, you mentioned CUV, SUV, sedan, but you didn't mention hatchback. Uh, it's still a large part of your overall volume portfolio as things stand today. So going forward, uh, is that something that flexibility could kick in depending on where the market goes, what the consumer preferences are, or you're very clear about the fact that it would be sedan, SUV, CUV that will drive it? No, I would say like as of now, this is the plan we have and it is based on some uh, data and mm -hmm. some uh, uh, you know facts. If you see today, 
uh, uh, you know, when you see the to, uh, January to November market, SUVs are contributing 37.2% to the overall market and hatches are now 40% to the overall market. Who would have imagined this five years back? So the Indian customer, frankly speaking, is really evolving in a big way towards SUVs. Uh, that said, like I said, the advantage of our eGMP platform is that it gives us a lot of flexibility. So we are saying, as of now, the plan is SUVs, CUVs, and sedans. At the same time, in case we feel that yeah. yes, the uh, market exists, then we'll definitely study that. So tell me this, now when it comes to that mass end of the BEV offering, you've mentioned there will be mass and mass premium. Uh, that mass product, um, is there a, a, a sort of a body style target? Is there a price point target? Is there a particular part of India? Is it a tier two, tier three kind of a product? What's your overall strategy that, because that development is clearly very India centric. Right. So that's a very important question and uh, I would say uh, there are a couple of key things when a customer is deciding about uh, buying an EV based on our market research. The first is of course the range and on the range we believe that probably a, a mass market EV also should have a range of about 350 kilometers. As uh, a minimum threshold. So this is what we are, we are really looking at. At the same time we are also looking at not only giving him that range but also giving him a home charging at home. We are also looking at some strategic partnerships to develop a public charging yeah. infrastructure net uh, for charging is concerned. So that is one part of it. On the affordability, look EVs are of course new to India but globally frankly EVs have been there and what we find is that uh, in some countries because of the support from the government the price of petrol or diesel or EVs or hybrids etc is more or less similar and the customer can decide you know what he wants to buy that's like an ideal situation but that also requires uh, uh, some uh, good incentives coming from the from the government uh, in India that uh, for us also that would be an ideal situation but in the absence of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, fame to incentives we feel that uh, uh, still you know we have to really make it affordable and Those incentives uh, could happen though. I mean, we can always hope that they... But that will be a bonus you're saying. You're not making your plans based on this No, I would say that, it, uh, you know, because uh, the costs, uh, as you know, the material costs are still high, the Definitely. battery costs are still high. So there are a lot of ifs and buts about it. Uh, at the same time, you know, we, we know that affordability is a key factor. Yeah. So as Hyundai, it is our responsibility to ensure that we can be as affordable as possible. So it's still very difficult to really say that, okay, this is the price band we're talking about, uh, but we'll try to keep it as affordable as possible. That's all the time we have here on CNB this week. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Electric vehicles, it's a revolution that is coming. It's not far away, it's not as far as you might think. And it's certainly something that not just Hyundai, but many manufacturers are now preparing for in an earnest and big way. Please react to that, react to the episode in general and tell us what you'd like to see. Thank you for watching. Please wear your seat belts. And remember, as things start to get a little bit scary again, Carry these. Mask up in public places. If there are other people in the car with you, definitely keep your masks on. Sanitize your hands regularly. Yes, all our COVID protocols need to come right back. Take care. Stay safe.